Hello everyone, welcome to another CSS tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the display property. We're going to be reviewing its most popular values, when to use them, and how to use them. So let's dive right in. Let's begin by taking a look at the sample web page on the right side of your screen. We see that there is a line of text, and then a blue box, this is a div, and then a bit of additional text and an image. So what is the display property? I'm actually going to answer that with another question. What is the difference between this orange word and this blue box? Now, I don't expect you to know the 100% correct complex or technical answer, but right away, you know the common sense answer. Uh, the blue box is sitting on its own line. And this orange word is part of this line of text. One is an inline element, and one is a box or a block element, right? So let's begin with those two most popular values to the display property, inline and block. Let's first dissect the inline value. So if we take a look at our markup, we see that the orange word is wrapped in a span tag. So let's look at the CSS uh, that's being applied to the span tag. Font weight of bold, the color of orange, a background color of yellow. But what we care about is that behind the scenes, the web browser is applying this code by default, display in line. So if we refresh, we see that absolutely nothing changes. We don't need this line of code. The web browser because this is a span element, we'll apply it by default automatically. Um, so what is the inline value? Well, you can see that the text sits on the same line as its surrounding text. It's inline. So for example, if we were to say display block, we see that now it sits on its own line and it's taking up the full width. Uh, but before we go into display block, let's stick on display inline for the moment. So we now have a general idea of what the inline value means. It simply means that the text or the element will be in line with regards to the content surrounding it. But let's get into the specifics. What are the limitations of the inline value? So for example, our span element is in line. So let's try to give it a specific width. Width 200 pixels. If we refresh, we see that nothing changes. Hmm, let's try to give it a specific height. Again, absolutely nothing changes. Let's attempt to add a bit of margin to the element. So margin, 100 pixels vertical margin, and let's say 50 pixels horizontal margin. So if we refresh, we see that the horizontal margin is acknowledged, but the 100 pixels of vertical margin is being ignored. And that's because this is an inline level element. Um, as we noticed that our width and height values were ignored, so will any vertical margin values be ignored. Um, now let's add a bit of padding. Again, 100 pixels of vertical padding and 50 pixels of horizontal padding. So if we refresh, we see something quite interesting. We see that again, the horizontal, just like the margin, the horizontal padding is observed without a problem. The vertical padding is causing an issue. As far as the element itself is concerned, the padding is being applied, as we can see. But as far as its neighboring elements are concerned, they are ignoring the vertical padding. So this blue box, we can see that it's not being pushed down by the extra height of the padding of this yellow element. We're seeing that it's just sitting exactly where it would sit, even if this element had zero padding. Um, now to make this abundantly clear, let's switch the span to a block level element. So display block. Now when we refresh, there are going to be a lot of changes. So here we go. Okay, so let's dissect what's going on now that this is a block level element. First of all, the custom width and height values that we input uh, a minute or two ago are now being observed because it's a block level element. You cannot apply widths and heights to inline level elements. Also, we added 100 pixels of vertical margin, and we can see that there's 100 pixels here on the top of it and also on the bottom of it. And we can also see that the vertical padding, uh, the 100 pixels top and bottom, is also being observed. 
Okay, so we've given this span enough attention. Uh, let's go ahead and remove this display block property. Let's also go ahead and remove uh, the custom padding and margin and height and width values. So if we refresh, we see that we're back to our original setup. So we've covered inline, the inline value. Let's talk a bit about block, block level elements. So for example, this blue box is a block level element. So if we hop over to our CSS, we do not need to include this line of code, display block. We do not need that uh, because this is a div, the browser will automatically uh, make the div block by default. Now, if you are familiar with CSS or if you've seen any of my other videos, odds are that you already know how block level elements work. So I'm not really gonna go into detail. You can assign custom widths, heights, padding, margin. You can float them, you can position them. Those are all topics for separate videos. If you're watching this video, what you're probably interested in are the ways that display block and display inline relate to one another. So we already looked at inline and you're already familiar with block. Now let me introduce you to a third value, inline hyphen block. So inline block. And now the question is, when are you going to use this value? What is it useful for? Uh, well, let's imagine a scenario. Let's imagine we wanted this span and the top line of text to remain in line. We want it to sit with the other text, but we want it to have a custom width, possibly a custom height, or we want it to have uh, padding. So in our CSS, we'll say display inline block. Let's give it a width of 110 pixels and we'll center the text. And we'll also give it five pixels padding all the way around. And let's also give it margin bottom 100 pixels. So if we refresh, we see that it's the best of both worlds. It's in line with the other text and we were able to add declarations that previously only worked on block level elements. So it's sort of a hybrid between the two. So you are now familiar with the three most popular values to the display property. Inline, inline hyphen block, and block. Now, while there are additional values that we did not cover in this video, I feel that these three values are the building blocks for all other values. And if you can get a firm understanding of how these three values work and how they relate to one another, you will have no trouble uh, researching and understanding the other values on your own. Uh, also having said that, if you've mastered these three values, you'll be able to uh, achieve 99.9% .9 of any layout you would ever want to achieve anyways. Uh, one quick note before I end the video, actually two quick notes. Um, there is a, another value that I just want to run by you that doesn't have so much to do with layout as it does with whether you just want the element to display at all or not. And that is display none. So for example, if we wanted to hide the blue box, we can simply add display none. And if we refresh, we see that it disappears. It completely removes it from the display of the page. And I will create additional videos about the display none, but basically it's very, very useful uh, when you're creating print style sheets or style sheets for mobile devices, etc. Now, one other thing I wanted to cover before the, the video is over, and that is that every element has a default value. And that's just something that you're going to have to become familiar with. So you know that spans by default are inline. Uh, also, images by default are inline. Um, the EM tag and the strong tag are also inline by default. Div by default is block. Also any heading level, so H1 through H6 by default are block. Paragraph tag by default is block. Uh, these are just things that you will become familiar with as you code more. Uh, but if you're ever having a frustrating moment and you don't understand why an element is behaving a certain way, try to remember how is it behaving by default. Is it inline or is it block? Uh, anyways, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you feel like you learned something, and thanks for watching. Bye.